partnership stronger than it's ever been. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that together, uh, through our America's Partnership for Economic Prosperity, we're going to grow the economies of the hemisphere from the bottom up and the middle out. You know, we uh, have said many times that uh, there's no reason why this hemisphere shouldn't be the most prosperous, most democratic hemisphere in the world. We have all the makings of that, and we're standing up for democracy and freedom, human rights, and the rights of workers. And I know we should. Several of the states shown to have some of the highest rates of delinquency were Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Texas, all by poverty levels above the national average. Median household income is also among the lowest nationally in these states. The child poverty rate in the United States improved dramatically because of expansions of the social safety net during the crisis. But experts are warning that allowing relief measures to expire may reverse these historic gains. And while the crisis cut pressure on the well-being of millions of children, new measures greatly improved child welfare. The child poverty rate decreased from 14.2 to 28 in 2018 to less than 5.6% in 2021, and the rate of severe poverty was cut in nearly half. Folks, what do you think about this? Is President Biden doing all that it takes to send out the fourth stimulus check? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Here's an important update. I know many of you guys are wondering when Congress is actually going to do something about the fourth stimulus check. So here it is. Congress will be sending out another batch of fourth stimulus payments to Americans. The Social Security Administration is also looking at a new benefit raise for Social Security beneficiaries. Democrats have proposed a new action plan for the Social Security program, and now if you're retired or just about to retire, then next year's Social Security checks are likely to be are likely to see one of the biggest bumps on record as, re as a result of surging consumer price indexes. The average beneficiary may be in line to get as much as $180 a month starting next January. And anyone living on a fixed income is being hit hard by inflation. And the higher payments will be welcome news will be welcome news for retirees who have seen their household finances squeezed so far this year as a result of rocketing inflation and turmoil in the financial markets. The consumer price index is up an annual 8.6% through May. The way ahead of the 5.9% annual inflation adjustment handed out to social security beneficiaries in January. Meanwhile, retirees with savings in stocks and bonds have seen their portfolio slump with the financial markets. Anyone living on a fixed income is being hit hard by inflation. Social security checks have lost 9% of their purchasing power in a year. In the annual COLA, which was instituted by during the inflationary period of the 1970s, is calculated by comparing consumer prices each summer with prices from the previous year. The Social Security Administration will look at the average CPI numbers for July, August, and September and compare them to the average for the same three months last year. Experts say that we are ready, that we are ready on track for the cost of living adjustment for 2023 of at least 7.9%. That's pretty much a guaranteed minimum. The reason? May CPI's figure is already 7.9% above the averages for last year. So even if there are no further price increases in the economy at all for the rest of the summer and throughout the year, we're looking at this level of increase. For an average Social Security benefit at, at around $1,700 a month, that increase will work out to, a, to an extra $120 each month. My, uh, my great-grandfather was, was worked in the mines, was a mining engineer, and everybody, uh, everybody there, there was only one word you heard most often in my family. Not a joke. Most important word. It wasn't unions. It was dignity. Dignity. Everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity. My dad... Then we moved to a little town. When Cole died, we moved to a town called Claymont, Delaware, just across the line in, from Pennsylvania, where the Delaware River bends. And you know, uh, used to have over 6,000 uh, 6, steel workers. We're steel. It's all gone now. All of it gone. Used to be a company town, literally. The hills were all company stores, company, uh, uh, co company buildings. But it's gone. And uh, the union movement began to just... Individual taxpayers logged an average federal refund of $1,800. And there's only a month left to file your federal income taxes. Unless you live in Alabama, California, or Georgia. In the eight weeks since, the IRS started accepting tax returns. The agency has already processed 63 million returns and issued almost 50 million tax refunds. If you filed early, you might be wondering when you're going to get a refund. And the good news is that 90% of eligible taxpayers should get the refunds within three weeks of filing. Setting up direct deposit for your tax refund speeds things up quite a bit, and paper checks can take six to eight weeks to arrive by the mail. 
the quickest way to monitor your tax refunds with the IRS, whereas on the refund page, which also lets you know if your return has been rejected because of the errors. But everybody know this, the earliest early birds who filed a tax return in January might have been frustrated to learn that by law, the IRS couldn't issue the refunds until mid-February if they claimed the earned income tax credit. Taxpayers who qualify for this credit will certainly find it to be well worth the wait when the refunds arrive much larger, and the earned income tax credit is a tax break for low to moderate income households. It's a refundable credit which means that it can be used to reduce any tax bill you owe, and whatever is left over will come back to you as part of the refund. It's also important to remember that you can qualify for with or without children. And this credit saves 30 million taxpayers and families more than $60 million. Last year, the average earned income tax credit recipient received $2,000 from this credit. It will help so many people out, folks, and I'm glad that some people are getting the help that they need in order to receive this stimulus cash because Alabama residents could soon get a tax rebate of up to 800 bucks. The governor has also proposed a one-time tax rebate from Alabama that would give 400 bucks to individuals and bucks to married couples, along with the one-time tax rebate from Alabama. Governors have also proposed a 2% pay raise for teachers and state employees. Now, as per the Alabama Department of Revenue, part-year residents, single residents, that is, are required to file a return if their annual income is above 4000 bucks. while Alabama residents and joint filing Alabama residents are required to file a return if their annual income is more than 10000 Alabama has two budgets, the General Fund and the Education Trust Fund. The budget that funds education has a rare surplus of $2.8 billion, while the state's General Fund has a surplus of $350 million. And also, lawmakers debated on the proposed spending plans before arriving for the final version of this. President has revealed his new plan to take action and address the rising cost of living for Americans. A new, a new relief bill has been proposed that would provide eligible seniors with a $200 stimulus check. Now, while pointing to robust June jobs and numbers, falling gas prices, Joe Biden announced today that his economic program is working. During a White House event, Biden said, Today, the Labor Department reported that we added 372,000 jobs last month. Here's why it's important. Our private sector has now recovered all the jobs lost during the crisis. Now, it is happening. The inflation rate is expected to rise once again, everybody. And now, the Federal Reserve is planning to take big action to address this major issue. With millions of people worried about the stepping in, with Congress stepping in for a little extra relief, people don't know if they're going to receive stimulus payments in 2023. But in this video, I'll explain to you the most important stimulus check information that you have to know. Because remember folks, if President Biden does send out the fourth stimulus check in time, many people will get the relief that they so desperately need. And that would definitely be a great thing. So I hope that President Biden can keep his promise to the American people and send out stimulus payments by 2024. Do you think he will? Tell me in the comments. While high inflation and the state of the economy remain at the top of the list of America's top concern. A new poll showed that at least 60% of respondents said they have a great deal about concern and inflation in the economy. The percentage increased by two points for both categories from a poll taken last year. The Fed is already raising its key interest rate by 0.25 percentage points, underscoring the central bank's commitment to fighting inflation, even if that heightens the financial pressure on the country's banks. Now folks, listen to this.